I like to have a little bit of flair on my motherboards. And in she goes! Cyberpunk 2077 running on an AMD graphics card. This video is sponsored by Amaze. For your chance to win a $20,000 gaming setup and support a great cause, go to amaze.com slash pccentric. Guys, 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 you'll never guess what we're doing today. We're building a gaming computer. And today we've got a really special one for you. Not only because we've got a brand new case from Corsair, we've got RGB components, but actually we're going for an all AMD system. We've got a 6800 XT, the tough edition. We've got a B550 motherboard. And in this video, we're gonna put it all together. We're gonna go through all of the different components. We're gonna show you what's hot, what's not, what's dropped. And last, but certainly not least, we're going to be sharing those all-important gameplay benchmark numbers. So if you are going to put something together that's quite similar to this, you know your PC inside and out before it's even arrived at your house. How about that for service? Let's start by taking you through all of the components that we're using here today. And it begins with the motherboard. This is the ROG Strix B550-E Gaming. And this is a really good price to performance board if you need a few more features than you find on maybe something like an entry level tough. Things like Wi-Fi, really important if you don't have an ethernet jack in your room where you're using your computer. And it does have USB BIOS flashback. So even if this is running an older BIOS, it's very easy to actually get this flashed and updated so that your system will work. Work. Not so on a lot of cheaper motherboards. That's our base then, but we will of course need a chip, and the one that we're using here today is the Ryzen 9, and this is a 5000 series 5900X. So you can go a little bit higher end if you want 16 cores, but for a gaming PC there's pretty much no point getting this really unless you're doing anything else. In fact, I probably would have picked the Ryzen 7 5800X for this build, but ultimately I don't have that chip, so it's entirely up to you whether you want to go for 8 cores or the 12 that's actually inside this one. But at the end of the day, these are just fantastic processors. There's very little that they can't do. Thermals are good, performance is great, price is pretty decent as well, despite them being more expensive than the last generation. It's going to be very interesting to see what Intel can do, but at the time of filming at least, I would go for AMD if I was building my own gaming PC. Where things do get a little bit more interesting is with the graphics card, and this is the RX 6800 XT, and it's basically the alternative, if you like, to the RTX 3080. The version that we've got in front of us is the ASUS Tough, and I absolutely love this one, not because it's necessarily the best or the brightest, but because in terms of price to performance, I think it absolutely nails all aspects. It's very quiet, it doesn't get too hot. Assuming you can get it at the RRP, it's actually for a very good price as well. And it looks pretty good. It doesn't rely on like overly bright lights or anything. It's just well built, it's solid. And I think it looks like it's quite expensive as well. Unlike me, really, I think I'm just compensating with all of these computer components. Let's move on to the RAM. This is some Trident Z Neo, and we're using 32 gigs here. This is by no means needed for a gaming PC. 16 is pretty much the sweet spot, but I think it perfectly matches all of the components that we've got here, really. We're using four sticks. This is 3600 megahertz. I did also consider going for an RGB SSD, but thought better of it. Here we're using a two terabyte PCI Generation 3 drive. This is the Rocket Q. Gen 4 SSDs don't really make that much difference at the moment for anything but productivity apps, but in the future this definitely might change with things like Microsoft's Direct Storage API. We have the most exciting part in any gaming PC, the power supply, one that I think is actually discontinued or at least has been replaced with a newer model. Hooray! The cables that we're using here are the Pro PSU Cable Kit from Corsair, and because this is an all AMD build we are of course going for the red edition. Ooh. The final component is this, an all-in-one liquid cooler. It is the absolutely terribly named IQ H100i Elite Capellix. It's RGB aplenty on this thing, so it's really going to stand out in your rig. I do agree that they look better than air coolers, but obviously you are paying a fair bit more for something like this. But the benefit is better cooling, so if you're going to want to overclock, this should be able to do it as well. Before we get started, I have the absolute pleasure of announcing that you can win your very own life-changing gaming setup worth $20,000. Amaze reached out to sponsor this video, and they're giving away the setup of your greatest desires. Whether it's triple monitors, RTX 3090s, streaming gear, RGB lighting, it's all up to you, with a prize pool worth up to $20,000 to spend on the setup of your dreams. $20,000 to spend on a setup. I think it's fair to say that 8K gaming is probably going to be doable at that level. But the real beauty of this project is that you can help a very important charity with donations supporting the Bungie Foundation and Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. The Bungie Foundation works to transform care for pediatric patients. 
and reduce distress and suffering in children through entertainment. Children's Miracle Network Hospitals raises funds for 170 children's hospitals, supporting the health of 10 million kids every year across the US and Canada. To potentially win a $20,000 gaming setup and of course support a great cause, go to amaze.com slash PCcentric or hit that link down below. Without any further ado, let's actually start building this gaming PC. And the case that we have here is brand new from Corsair. And this is the 5000D. This is the X version, so it's an IQ case. You've got RGB, tempered glass is pretty much the story behind this one. It's a fair bit bigger than the 4000D, which was already a pretty well-sized case. So this is for those of you that just want maybe an easier build or that you want to put more stuff in it. You'll notice you've got this side ventilation here, which is pretty cool. You get a load of masking tape to help decorate your house. To answer your guys' questions, no, I don't actually wear an anti-static wrist strap, but you always should do as I say, not do as I do. I mean, I haven't actually broken a motherboard or any components with static yet, and think how many PCs I've built, but that's not an excuse for breaking yours now, is it? It's a pretty simple looking motherboard. We do actually have some AMD red stripes down this, which is great for an AMD system, maybe not so good for others. Plop your motherboard on top of the box, grab your Ryzen CPU. Note that with the higher end ones, you don't actually get a cooler in the box itself, so you're going to have to spend more money on something else. So drop it in and then lower down this little lever to get it nice, safe and secure. And then get a load of thermal paste on your finger from where you didn't clean it up properly last time. Grab your RAM, and if you are going to go for 32 gigabytes like we are here today, then I would actually recommend that you buy two sticks of 16 rather than four of eight like we have here, just as that means it's gonna be easier to upgrade. You're not gonna to have to chuck away all of your RAM just to make that upgrade. It also means you get four satisfying click noises rather than two. Oh yeah. Something that's really important to note about B550 is that if you are going to use a Gen 4 SSD, you need to make sure you put it in this top slot. So we're gonna put our Gen 3 drive in the lower M.2, and then in the future, if you do wanna grab a PCI Gen 4 drive, then you can move it to the top slot. Find its little slot on the motherboard, and then screw it down. At this stage, your motherboard should look something like this. You could maybe go for some black RAM if you wanted it all to match, but I like to have a little bit of flair on my motherboards. Most nerdy thing I've ever said in my life. You guys told me in the last video that you've had enough of all of the burps and stuff that I was leaving in, so that's, that's over now. But I will tell you that I had tomato soup for lunch, so you've missed out on a lot. I can still taste it. It was quite good though. Sainsbury's own brand, tomato and basil. Recommended. <laughs> when you have to buy a 24 inch monitor because there isn't any room on your desk for the ultra wide that you want because you've got a, a huge PC on it. Remember with this case, you do get three RGB SP fans at the front, but then nothing at the back, which is gonna look a little bit weird to be honest with you. So you're gonna wanna grab another one really just for aesthetics. This is a SP Pro, I think. The ones in the fronts are elites, but they don't actually sell those just yet. Obviously, it doesn't matter which fans you want to go for if you don't want to match them up, but note that it doesn't support 140s on the back, which is a little bit weird for such a big case, but it doesn't really matter. There are quite a lot of cables to plug in, mind you, because we've got two hubs at the moment, and we're going to have one more in just a second. We don't actually need to use this fan speed. We could just use the one that comes with the cooler. It is frustrating that on a case this expensive, the cables still have some ketchup and mustard on them, though. That's, that, that, that's annoying. Now let's do the radiator. The top piece just pulls off. You do also have this little like dust filter thing here as well. Grab your radiator for a quick little test fit. You're not gonna mount it without putting the fans on, but you wanna make sure you can actually get the orientation right before you commit. You get two different color options in the box. Look, I've gone for the white to sort of match our RAM a little bit better, but the black is the default. Fans usually have two labels, the pretty one and then the, well, like the serial number, horrible one. If you can see that, then the air is actually gonna be blowing towards you. Whereas if you can see the pretty one, then it's gonna be blowing away from you. And when you lift up, you wanna make sure that the cables are actually gonna be at the back of the case so you can route these through and make it look neat. A very common mistake is to do it the other way around. And then by the time you actually go to fit it in, you realize you've got these horrible cables dangling down and you've got to redo the whole thing. When you are screwing your radiator in, do make sure that you do use the washers provided as otherwise the screws don't always get proper purchase and can fall through. Don't drop them as well. Grab your AMD brackets out of the box, get your pump, and then essentially just put back what you've taken off. The mounting hardware means that you can only have the tubes facing left or right rather than up or down. And for best case scenario, you'd want to mount it like that. But you can't. Just lower down your pump onto your CPU and then try and hook, well, the hooks over the little posts. It is very easy to remove this Corsair D 
decoration though, you can see it's just four screws with an Allen key, like an RGB pad underneath. You can have it facing any way you want, and it's very easy to swap out with the tool that they provide. The back's gonna be quite interesting because I think when we're done, it's gonna look super clean, but at the moment it's a, it's a little bit intimidating because there are quite so many cables. Because we're mixing and matching fans, we are gonna use two different RGB hubs so that they can be controlled properly. I imagine it would be fine, to be honest, for SP and ML to mix in terms of RGB, but it's probably not recommended. But in terms of the fan hub, obviously we do only need one. So we're not gonna use the one that comes with a case, we're just gonna use this. You can rejoin me in half an hour when I've sorted out all of the mess. So I decided to stick the hub here, and we've got six fans all plugged into the speed controller at the top, two for the RGB for the cooler down here, and then we have the original RGB controller for all of the SP fans at the top, so we can control everything independently and not run into any compatibility issues. Next up is the power supply and all of our glorious red cables. I get so excited by the cables though, they're just so much better than the ones that you get in the box. It's definitely not an essential thing for any PC build, but if you're after aesthetics, I think it's one of the things that makes the biggest differences really, other than just general component cable management. Of course you want to make sure that you put all of your cables in before you mount your power supplies. It makes it so much easier. You don't want to be fumbling around in there. Trust me, it will save you a whole bunch of time and it allows you to actually map out what cables you need. It's a, it's a much easier way of doing it. Not bad looking, eh? Definitely very uh, AMD red. So let's complete the look with a little bit more. Here is our 6800 XT. You can see that this is still an absolutely gigantic graphics card in every sense of the word. That thing is huge. Pretty similar really to the RTX 3080 that we saw earlier in the year. Obviously it says Radeon at the top in much nicer, smaller text rather than the huge RTX logo that you usually get. And in she goes. There she blows. We'll finish up by neatening these power cables. They do block that tough logo, but to be honest, I'm not crazy on it anyway, so that's almost like a blessing in disguise for this rig. On the whole though, it's been a very easy build. It's taken a little bit of time, but there's quite a lot of stuff to go in here and cables to manage. Shall we see if it works? Remember that if you haven't flashed your BIOS, then chances are it won't actually support Ryzen 5000 out the box. So you use the USB BIOS flashback functionality, and if you do want to see how that works, click the video in the top right corner of your screen as I go through it and show you that it's very simple to do. But, moment of truth, and we have some power, we have some RGB. Wow, that cooler's looking pretty cool, actually. Yay, we do, we do, we do, we do, we do. And I was told as well in the last video not to be acting so silly when my computer works. How dare you tell me not to be excited when I build a computer and it works? Shame on you. So as always, I'm gonna go straight into AI Tweaker and turn on DOCP, which is essentially converting the XMP timings to be compatible with Ryzen. I would usually tune the fans at this stage as well, but because we're using the Corsair Hub, we need to do this in software so we can just proceed, install Windows, and get some games loaded. I have to say though, before we proceed, just how well this cooler goes with our RAM. It's almost like a perfect combination. They've got the same sort of top. We've got black accents on both the RAM and the Corsair logo. I know most people would probably match it up with some Vengeance Pro, but what we've got here works a real treat. Here we are then, we've got our system set up, we've got some games installed and running, but I'll actually start by saying that this PC is big. Building it on a table is one thing, having it next to you in proportion next to a monitor is definitely another. Do be a little bit aware if you're buying this online and you haven't seen it in real life, it is definitely a bigger case. Let's press on to the gaming performance though and jump into some Horizon Zero Dawn. This is still an absolutely fantastic looking game, absolute max settings. Of course this is running in 4K and it is a very difficult game to run. And this is something that the RTX 3080 can run very well itself. They're pretty much going to trade blows, to be honest with you. It's not really going to be a huge difference one way or the other when it comes to the outright winner. Drop it down to 1440p and you can see you're going to get an absolutely huge increase of around about 35, 40% more frames a second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was just hearing a really weird noise that I've never heard from a computer before. I, I was thinking the fans are broken. I was like, what is going on? Turns out it was just the fans taking this inner film off 
and it sounded like a like a flag flapping in the wind or something. Let's get competitive though with some Apex Legends actually running in Kings Canyon at the moment. This is the dream right here. All of that clarity from the 4K resolution, the lovely fluidity and smoothness that you get from high refresh rates, and of course all of those settings cranked up to the max to truly get the most out of this game. This is such a great experience, you really need to see it to believe it. I miss playing Apex, I never have time anymore. This is the moment you guys have been waiting for. Cyberpunk 2077 running on an AMD graphics card. And it looks very good, this is running at full 4K resolution, but the big catch is that you won't get any DLSS ever with this particular graphics card, and at the moment, ray tracing is currently disabled entirely. 30 frames a second with a controller is fine, but ultimately you're not spending all of this money on a gaming PC to run at 30 frames a second, even if it is at 4K resolution. So what can we do to change this? Well, we can go into the options menu, we could turn some of the settings down, but the thing I would want to do is actually go and try this dynamic fidelity FX CAS system. So this is very similar to how it runs on consoles where you set the minimum and maximum resolution and then it will dynamically scale between the two figures that you use. So the overall effect is going to be quite similar to DLSS and it definitely is working. You can see we are now getting around about 60 frames a second which is fantastic. But while the image is still sharpened with the AMD Fidelity FX software, it's not really working as well as DLSS to be honest with you. It's, it's fine, but the image is noticeably softer and not as high resolution as it was before. But the fact that you can run this game at 60 frames a second at max settings with very high visual quality and resolution still isn't anything to complain about really. It just depends whether you're buying your PC for Cyberpunk really. Last but certainly not least, we have some Fortnite. Once again, we're running at 4K, absolute max settings, and this is a game that does have DLSS on NVIDIA cards, so you would get even higher frame rates, but this is pure, unadulterated 4K resolution, and it looks fantastic. But don't go thinking that 4K resolution is just about making it that little bit prettier. In a game like Fortnite where you're trying to see into the distance, the mixture of all of that smoothness with that added resolution means that you can see further away. And when someone gets close to you, well, you can just turn around and uh, nip them in the head. I'm not sure if that's a phrase, nip them in the head. Let's be real though, most gamers aren't playing at 4K, so 1440p is probably going to be more of interest to you. And we're getting around about 160 frames a second here, still everything absolute max settings, and I think that for the vast majority of gamers, this is going to be the sweet spot. You've got that super high frame rate mixed with great resolution that's perfectly clear enough, and it's just a brilliant way to play. So then, that is the all AMD gaming PC. There are a few compromises here and there, but on the whole, I think this is a real standout system. It's definitely on the larger side, but I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Thermals and acoustics are very well handled, despite the fact that this is a more closed off case with very high end hardware inside it. I think the main change that I would make would just be to remove that Ryzen 9 CPU and go for a Ryzen 7. I love those red cables though, and the way that the RGB RAM perfectly matches the cooler. Yes, you can't sync them up in the same software, but I think for most people it's a sort of fire and forget thing anyway, so it's not that much of a problem. Let me know your thoughts on this system though. Would you go for a larger case like this? Do you think that we've perfectly matched everything or have I got everything wrong? Is it completely inappropriate for gaming? I would love to hear your thoughts on this one, especially that GPU. Do you think the 6800 XT is worth picking up or are you team green, team Nvidia? If you do want to check out current pricing, as always, you can find my Amazon affiliate links listed down below. So don't forget to smash that like button, get subscribed, check out more videos in the end screen. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.